Hello and welcome everyone. This is an audiovisual recording for the reading and key concept questions that go with Unit 2, uh, Lesson 3. In this particular lesson, we're going to be looking at the issue of First Amendment and freedom of expression from a contemporary standpoint. In this particular part of the lesson, we're going to be looking at football and patriotism. You can either read the article excerpt that's been uploaded on Classroom, or you can listen to the following recording to help you answer the key concept questions with elaboration from me and talking points as well. Before we begin, please let me make sure that you have opened today's lesson on the Google Doc on Google Classroom, and so that as the presentation is going, you can type in the answers as the questions appear. So let's go ahead and get started. The NFL is prohibiting players from kneeling during the national anthem, but the debate about patriotism and free speech in sports still goes on. When the National Football League season kicks off this month, much of the focus will be on what happens before the actual games. When the Star Spangled Banner is played, will some players kneel or stay in the locker room as protest? In May, NFL owners approved a new policy that requires players to stand and show respect for the flag. If they choose to go out onto the field during the national anthem or to remain in the locker room until the song is over, players who don't comply could face punishment, and their team could be fined as well. The new rule comes nearly two years after Colin Kaepernick, then a quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, sparked a nationwide debate by kneeling on the sidelines during the anthem. The protest, he said, was meant to call attention to police brutality against African Americans and other racial injustices. Before long, several players across the NFL began sitting, kneeling, or raising a fist during the anthem. Many people, including President Trump, object to such protests, which they view as unpatriotic and disrespectful to the military. Trump has had that Trump has said that any player who doesn't stand for the anthem should be fired, and maybe you shouldn't be in the country. He has also urged fans to boycott the NFL, the country's most popular and profitable sports league. In recent months, tensions between the president and the NFL have continued to escalate. In June, Trump disinvited the Philadelphia Eagles to an event at the White House to celebrate their 2018 Super Bowl win, and most of the team had previously said they wouldn't attend in part because they disagreed with the president's outspoken stance on the anthem protests. Despite outrage from the president, many players and their supporters say that protesting inequality is just as American as displaying the flag or standing for the national anthem. According to NFL players, though, Union, which opposes the new rule, the anthem protests are simply an effort to make the nation more equal. The NFL players love their country, support our troops, give back to their communities, and strive to make America a better place. But here's a brief history about the anthem in sports. You see, Francis Scott Key, a lawyer from Maryland, wrote the Star Spangled Banner after witnessing the British attack on Fort McHenry in Baltimore during the War of 1812. The song, originally of home, officially became the country's national anthem in 1931, and it has been performed at sporting events dating back to the 19th century. Some believe that Americans have had such an intense relationship with the anthem and the flag because the U.S. wasn't created a common platform of religion or ancestry, unlike many other countries. Instead, Americans are bound by ideas and concepts that all people are created equal. For example, consequently, something that represents those ideas, like an anthem, can come to seem vitally important, even sacred. That may be partly why Americans feel so strongly about the current protests. According to a recent Washington Post Kaiser Family Foundation poll, 53% of Americans say it's never appropriate to kneel during the anthem, while 42% say it's sometimes appropriate. Kaepernick, who had not been signed on an NFL team since the 2016 season, and the other players who have protested are not the first athletes to be criticized for demonstrating during the national anthem. At the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexico City, for example, African-American sprinters Tommy Smith and John Carlos raised gloved fists in a black power salute while on the medal stand during the playing of the national anthem. They were then thrown out of the Olympics. The First Amendment Many team owners viewed the new NFL rule as a compromise. Chicago Bears chairman George McCaskey told reporters, We think it will return the anthem to what it should be, a unifying force, while providing an option for those players and the other team personnel who choose not to stand. But many other people see the rule as an attempt to silence players and appease Trump, who they say shouldn't have gotten involved in the debate in the first place. What NFL owners did today was thwart the players' constitutional rights to express themselves and use our platform to draw attention to social injustices like racial inequality in our country. Eagle safety Malcolm Jenkins wrote in a statement. As a private entity, however, the NFL is within its legal rights to prohibit players from protesting during games. Legal experts say the First Amendment protects Americans only from the government denying them free speech. Regardless, many people see the NFL's actions to stifle players' speech as clashing with American values. As the season begins, many players, coaches, and fans say that they're eager to put the issue behind them, but TV ratings for the NFL games fell nearly 10% last season. A decrease, analysts say, is partly related to the anthem protests and the league's handling of the issue. Arizona Cardinals president Michael Bildwell told reporters that he hopes fans will pay more attention to the game this season than what's happening off the field. I look forward to getting back to the focus back on football. 
So as you guys can see, the issue of First Amendment is not just confined to everyday life with uh, what we think we can say and do, but it's also confined to other areas and domains of our lifestyles that we sometimes forget about, even with sports. So obviously this is still an ongoing issue. Uh, as you may or may not be aware, now that it is 2020, uh, the issue of showing support for either side is still very much so covered in the news media today. If you look at the NFL and also other sports leagues too, you know, the NBA of course is having a very outspoken stance on this issue too. And so as times change, it'll be really interesting to see about how our views change about the first amendment and the application of the law on different types of circumstances. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I hope that this is helpful for you in answering those questions.